Hi folks, Damien here, aka Irish Trekkie, back with another Nerd Escape podcast. And as always, with me, I have Chris the Trek Collector. If you want to say hi there, Chris. Hi guys, and thanks for joining us yet again. And we have somebody interesting with us today. And I'm going to let Damien do the introduction, because this fella is very special. He brought me a wee, met him in Birmingham at Destination Star Trek Europe, and he gave me this little gift. And a stand for my Deep Space Nine, I must add as well. So Damien, if you want to introduce our guest today. Probably goes without saying, really. I think everyone knows Dave already. Um, Dave is the founder of uh, the unofficial Star Trek uh, Collection Facebook page, um, which is an absolute gem of a community. Um, so active for anyone who uh, is into their ships, and especially the Eagle Moss Collection as well. So check out the description beneath the video. I will leave a little hot link there to bring you over. And um, yeah definitely you're going to enjoy so uh dave welcome to the nerd escape podcast thank you very much uh long time listener first time caller <laughs> Happy to be here. good stuff good stuff nice introduction <laughs> and it's also yeah he's like you're a wicked 3d modeler as well as uh chris was showing there uh with a little tiny so. defined <laughs> yeah. yep it's, it's not uh, just that your 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 web page was a brilliant idea and it's a great community and guys if you want to find out where myself and Irish Trekkie might be hanging around uh daily <laughs> because it's just such a great page for information. It is definitely that page and we will post the link. It's very good. So anyone that is actually collecting the Eagle Moss collection should actually jump onto this Facebook page. It's a great journey. You'll meet great friends. Um, you know what I mean? Dave does actually great competitions as well monthly with uh oh. photographs of pictures of starships <laughs> that's right today's the first of the month i should have done one <laughs> <laughs> it's it's still the first day it's still uh, the first day technically uh, someone has to someone has to take neil's off his uh perch <laughs> yeah that's a tough job <laughs> so gentlemen uh, the reason i wrangled you all here today um we got some concrete news about discovery this week um or technically last week by the time this video goes up um with casting calls and uh, three confirmed actors um being named on the star trek website for discovery we have doug jones we have michelle yo and we have anthony rapp so gentlemen are, are you are you excited that we're starting to get actual news about discovery rather than only a little teaser trailer and then the theories of the internet going wild. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely. Am... I think they've cast it so far so good. Um, I'm very happy. Uh, I think one of the biggest problems that th people do forget that this is not being done in LA. This has been done in Canada. So this is a new move. So, mm. you know what I mean? To get the actors up to Canada is a big thing. So this is not straightforward just going out and, you know, who you have in mind. And they do seem to be very selective. They seem to know who they want. So the other side of it is, it's it, it, you know, it's not being filmed in the Paramount stu studio. We know that much. So, yeah, so far, so good. Just hope they can add to it. I think Doug Jones is fairly good because he's used to, well, we're used to not seeing his face, basically. He's yeah. covered under a mountain of makeup, mm. which is great for him because he knows what he's getting himself into. Uh, Michelle, I think, is a wonderful actress. And uh, Anthony... He's a Broadway actor. Uh, it's worked before in the past, and I look forward to having him on the show. Uh, it's great getting the, the names, and I'm sure over the next few weeks, we're probably going to start seeing more and more cast members join the crew. Cool. Yeah. And Dave? Oh, yeah. Um, I agree absolutely with Chris. Um, personally, I'm not familiar with all three that well, mm. but I know Doug Jones the most, and he's always been been great in his the character of creature performances so he's playing a creature again in discovery so you should ace that michelle yo is just from what i've seen with her she's a very commanding actress so playing the captain should be second nature hopefully and danny rep is a mystery to me but like you say he's a broadway actor so a lot of great track actors have been theater actors so yeah again natural fit Awesome. Yeah, I think there's some very good observations there. And like that, I would definitely subscribe to what you're saying as well. Um, what stood out to me was the... And it's it's hard it's hard to kind of really put a finger on it, but I think it's, these three are quite clever uh, castings, in my opinion. Um, 
again we had quite great success with theater actors in star trek because there's a a presence being brought to the screen a commanding uh, force and like michelle yo also um like we've seen her in um crouching tiger hidden dragon um she's on a netflix series as well like the name escapes me at the moment but um her so maturity Pilar. coming which sorry dave Mark Pilar? uh no it's i only came across this oh. i think it's something bow or ah, let, let us know in the comments below i i, <laughs> I do apologize but um she's going to be um in a captain's Captain. role so again very commanding and she is a, a very established uh actress actor as well and like you brought up there gentlemen um we have doug jones who uh, was in hellboy uh pan's labyrinth as well which were very substantial prosthetics and actually suits um in there as well and um so he's going to be very comfortable in an alien role if it's very heavily um augmented as well so um yeah exciting times and what i'd like to talk about now is obviously we've been hungry for a lot of information for a long time now and discovery has been pushed back to may but what information we do have we could actually kind of toy around with and see what that means um for example we have doug jones and i'm just reading off the the star trek website and i will leave the link in the description below but um he's been named as lieutenant saru if the pronunciation is correct um we know that he's a starfleet science officer and an alien species new to the Star Trek universe. So, a bit of a bold move. You know, he could have possibly been an established... Like, there's plenty of aliens that we've seen. Um, but a brand new alien to be introduced and uh, being a science officer as well. We've seen plenty of alien science officers in Star Trek. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Yeah, the science role is... It, it, to me, okay, it, it, I, we don't know if he's going to be on the Discovery. Um, to me, this is always the hard position to kind of fill. A uh, captain is fairly easy. You either like the captain or you don't. The captain gets compared with, you know, the predecessors. Mm. But to me, like, if you look back to the first science officer that we've seen, everyone loved Spock. Yeah. The next generation, we had Data. Um, then we had Jadzia Dax, which was a very, very smart move. And then in Voyager, again, back to tactical and not so much science, but, you know, we had the Vulcan present again of Tuvok. So we've always had that character that kind of goes for a Spock type role. So it is interesting. Will he be playing this? So the science officer role for me is a very, very hard character to get. If they're the head scientists on the bridge of Discovery, that to me is a very, very big role to play. Mm. Um, I think, uh, did you guys see the Comic-Con panel with Brian Fuller did when they announced Discovery the first time? And he's yes. speaking very, very broadly, but very also very specifically about the optimism of Star Trek and the idealism of Star Trek and how they're looking to bring a more optimistic vision of Star Trek compared to, say, I don't know, DS9 or maybe the JJ films, Ask Me to Darkness. Mm-hmm. I think having two, two science officers speaks to that fact that, hey, we're going to have a significant part of the show be about discovering new things and the unknown rather than blowing crap up. So uh, back to the fact they're leading with two science officer announcements gives me optimism that they're going to really stick mm-hmm. to that message of optimism and progressivism and the yeah. future is bright, so to speak. It's, yeah, it's a very good way to see it. Yeah, because we have Anthony Rapp, um, who was uh, noted as being Lieutenant um, Stamets, I think is the pronunciation of that. I could be wrong again. But... Um, he is the second Starfleet officer, but one thing to note, and it was something that Chris brought up as well, he's the only actor here that has been documented as serving aboard the Discovery. So potentially yeah. Doug Jones may be serving on another ship, possibly the other ship that we know in the universe that's been confirmed is the Shenzhou, which has been captained by Michelle Yeoh's character. So, um, yeah, I think that's a good interplay there that um, it's kind of going to the exploration side of things rather than being a protagonist, an antagonist, kind of always having a battle or something like that. We're going out where no one or no man has gone before um, as well. And interestingly enough, kind of moving away from Doug a little bit, um, Anthony Rapp's character uh, is down as a fungus expert, specifically noted fungus expert. And 
What is this? Astronomy... Astromycologist. Astro sorry, yeah. Astromycologist. Um, so fungus I expert... Dancing. I didn't remember that off the top of my head, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I got you on here for some reason. <laughs> but, um, yeah, a fungus expert and science officer uh, on board the Discovery. So, um, yeah. So, and I know these are only the three first characters. But uh, do you think there's a reason why they said fungus expert? Possibly not, but potentially. <laughs> Again, we don't know much at the moment. It's all stabbing in the dark, but mm. who knows? Um, there, there could be a reason behind it. Yeah. You wouldn't know. And it could be just a red herring as well. Um, like I'm thinking back to the brief bits of information that the likes of Brian Fuller and um, Nicholas Mayer kind of leaked out every so often. And um, we know that Discovery happens 10 years before the original series and it deals with something that was mentioned in star trek but never seen so it's it's it leaves well, the door wide open to be honest let's with you let's let's have a look at that timeline at the moment and this this is established canon for the moment now as we know canon can change once it shows up on tv but mm. at the moment as it stands 2153 mirror darkly we have the Tolians, okay? And that's kind of with the mirror universe, you can nearly turn around and say similar timings, okay? So the Tolians we do know are around. Earth's Romulan War is 2156 to 2160. So that has ended. Now, I still believe that the Romulans can still play a big part in this because I do not think the Romulans will just disappear. Um, yes, the Federation won't know about them. Um, and I think that would be very, very cool. A bit of espionage secret Romulan in there could be very good or even seeing the Romulans plotting behind the scenes maybe trying to influence the Klingons to start a war I think that would be very good but anyway the 2161 the NX-01 retires and we have the start of the Federation 2245 and this is the big date USS Enterprise 1701 is launched under the command of Robert April mm. and now roughly Hoping, this is a little stab in the dark, but I'm hoping the year is right. 2247 is probably roughly around the time the discovery is going to be set. So our slap bang in the middle between April and Pike taking command of the Enterprise. And I think it would be cool to see maybe April in it. You know, maybe a couple of years down, seeing April be promoted to a uh, fleet commander. Realistically, he hasn't really been in Star Trek, so it'd be cool to see that. Hmm. Nice to see if they can do something with Pike as well. Yeah. Uh, twenty-two fifty-one is when Pike takes over command of the Enterprise, and then we have twenty-two fifty-four is the Cage, and twenty-two uh, sixty-four is James T. Kirk in charge of the Enterprise, okay. and Pike becomes fleet captain. So that's you know what I mean. We're looking at nearly. 20 odd years down the line so realistically none of those events are going to show up and um, pike getting injured is 2266 um 2266 is when the tos starts under captain kirk 2267 is supposedly the first time they meet the gorn so again are they going to try and break that and upset tos fans who knows but who we do have thrown in there as well is we do have the orion syndicate we've got the tolians we've got the klingons they are saying that they're introducing a lot more new alien species. And we do have to realize as well with the Orions, mm -hmm. they're big into slaves. Do we see a slave revolt, maybe, that the Federation get caught up in? Who knows? Could this be the, the, one of the turning points where the Federation do establish the Non-Interference Act? Because we know under Archer, that wasn't established. That was a Vulcan thing. So it's, it, it's interesting, like, when you do look at that timeline at the moment, there's nothing really else in there or around there that's established in canon. Now, I know there is FASA and stuff like that. And, guys, by all means, throw it down in the, co uh, the comments below. Yeah. What do you think can so, fit that? It's only so open. Me about the event 10 years before TOS, which is what Brian Fuller said was going to be like the starting point of this whole thing. I was looking at the uh, Star Trek 09 uh, Wikipedia uh, page, and it says it said in 2058. Now, considering we have at least two ships confirmed for Discovery, mm -hmm. and there was a whole MacGuffin line in 2009 about the fleet being in the Laurentian system. 
Now, this is just me purely speculating, but I'm wondering maybe hmm. with the whole fleet being away, dealing with one event then, that's not Prime Trek, definitely not, but it's you know, it's around the same time, and it's the only thing I can think of mentioned in all the Trek around that era that would involve multiple ships. That's right, they were in the renting system. Wow. And then the other side of it as well, the other toss of the coin would make sense then with the Constitution class. That That's around exploring, but known safe territories of the federation mm. you know what i mean and they're they're prime ships now we do know as well that like when uh april stands down that the enterprise does undergo a refit before uh pike and again it'll go under a refit with kirk so mm -hmm. you know what i mean there's nothing to say that we mightn't even see a constitution class in this and again that could still make sense and discovery is actually newer than the enterprise it's possible. I mean, but then there's the whole thing—the registry number, though, being significantly lower than the Enterprise. I wouldn't too much attention on the registry number because they always two. change itself so like that. And there's a hundred and ten theories, like you know, it could be who. That is true, but they, they, they have been sequential that. though, throughout all, all track, more often than not. Well, yeah, we know the discovery this is, is NC thirty ten thirty one, but we don't know the launch date of. Discovery. True, you don't, no. no. Yeah, we're assuming, we're, assuming that, we're assuming that the Discovery now is is, is being launched. That's, that's yeah. an assumption now, no a fact. Yeah, is it but launched it's, in the it's, first it's episode? Is it going to be a brand new ship being launched or is it an established ship that we're coming into? Because like with, with, the, with, with Toss, obviously the Enterprise had gone through April and Pike did the refits and stuff like that as well. And we have quite, okay, I know it's subject to change here as well. But we saw that little trailer, the teaser. We have it coming out of this asteroid base and quite a, let's put it politely, a unique design um, versus the, the trend. Nice 3D print by Dave there, debut. Um, so again, it could be some a, a ship possibly launching in the first episode in response to something going on. Like we've we seen in Deep Space Nine, the Defiant was born out of a necessity. Um, like the Akira and the Norway Enterprise Borg Busters, which X I one, yeah, X I one, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, um, the Federation have a history of um, responding to situations with uh, you know when needs must as well. So, um, as 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 was put earlier, there's a lot of kind of stabbing in the dark here because we really know very yes, little exactly. about it. Like you know. But um, there does seem to be a big trend to um, going back to something new. I think I think that's a lot of the trend when Brian Fuller was talking about it. And we see like science officers and stuff like that as well. And um, like when we had John on, on the live cast, uh, do check out that live cast. It was great fun. Um, obviously, he's working on Discovery as well. Um, but he did say there's there's a lot of ships. We're going to see a lot of ships. Um and we know that it's going to be confirmed with two. So, um, yeah, it's going to be... I think it's definitely going to be very, very interesting. But, um, yeah, it's a very spicy time period. Yeah, I wonder if we're going to get some kind of dynamics in the show, similar to Battlestar Galactica, 2003 version. The re yeah. We had, um, like, Adama in command of Galactica and Admiral Kane in charge of Pegasus. Mm. I, I, I would that really... was, like, very aggressive and the hypercharged. So maybe Trek wouldn't go quite that exact route. But a similar kind of. I would like to see that, Dave. I would agree with you on that front because TOS back in the day with Kirk, like we did see him being outranked two or three episodes by a Commodore, yeah, yeah, or fleet captain, which to mm -hmm. me would be great to actually see in Discovery and seeing sort of like Michelle's there, obviously going to be playing a repeating role. It would be great to see the likes of herself as, say, a fleet captain or a Commodore. Yeah. And see that other side of it that you know what I mean. I, I think as opposed to just one captain and one captain yeah. trying to give the orders where it'd be great to see conflict between two captains. Yeah. Well again, captain on it. Yeah, exactly. Considering the, the flea aspect, I'm wondering if again like Balsa, they're gonna be on their own, away from the Starfleet. Uh, they could mm. be mm. investigating some wormhole when it goes wrong or something. Again, Brian for the Welcome Voyager, that was obviously 
the premise of Voyager may be even quite so extreme, but there's a fleet of ships on their own, and they have to deal with things, everything themselves, perhaps. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's what I'm assuming is the reason for the fleet. Yeah. And so. depending on whatever this kind of anchor point for the se- for the season is, um, like we know that Michelle Yeoh, I'm, go- I'm going to be horrible now pronouncing this, but she's been confirmed as Captain Georgiou. I think, <laughs> whatever her name is. So she's going to be the captain of the um, Shenzhou. And we know that the lead, the main kind of anchor actor in Discovery is going to be uh, Lieutenant Commander. Am I correct? Like number uh-huh. one, basically. Exactly, so yeah. I think that'd be interesting because we, we did see that in in Battlestar Galactica where we had uh, Adama, you know, commander in chief and stuff. But then we mm-hmm. saw the the flight the the fighter pilots, deck you know, his son and, and stuff like that. And then we saw the deck chiefs and yeah. kind of like mm-hmm. lower decks and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but now we have the unique aspect of potentially seeing that on multiple ships. And also yeah. we there was rumors about like, well, not so much rumors, but like Klingon crews and stuff like that as well. A Klingon captain. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we could so, be seeing like, one Klingon big captain. story arc from multiple yeah. angles. I think that is just, I, I think Discovery that definitely needs this, um, you know what I mean? You need to kind of have that have that familiar foe. And I think that's a very smart move. And preferably as well, I, I look, there's so many aliens in Star Trek. I'd like to see just more than one. If you just have so, one all the time, it'll just get a bit too predictable. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, it's the Klingons again. And um, not just with like a funky uh, nose. Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Um, what the absolutely needs to avoid seeing his forehead of the week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, my nostrils are up here now. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But like with the Ryans, you can get a standout character as well, straight off. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, I know the Gorn were kind of mentioned back, but realistically, are we like to me? You have to respect fifty years of Star Trek, and I think like you know what I mean. It it didn't take me too long to to jot yeah. down these things, and I think. If the story writers are good, they know what areas not to touch. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, don't undo. Can- like, it, it's good yeah. to go back. Go, going back to the top of the canon, um, I think for Discovery to do well, the modern audience, it can't be too beholden the canon. Like, mm. they said they're changing the look of the show, and I'm I'm glad they are doing that because you can't have a modern show that's like a 60s show nowadays. I mean, Continues does it fine for a fan film. They do a fantastic film. I love to see love continues. Yeah. Well, I love that. I love that. But I to... that was. Believe it or not now, I'm actually one of these that think that that is actually fairly... Mm. I don't think there's too much problem with a phaser. I don't think there's too much problem with a communicator. What I do think there's a big problem with is the likes of the tricorders. Like, that's not that bad either. But like I, I, I would go with Dave in the fact that we know it can be done very well. Like we, we, we've seen it in D Space Nine, um we see we saw it in the mirror darkly, like the defined um ship, um K seven and it looked amazing and it's like it's like nerd van for Star Trek um for Star Trek fans. Fan. But for the likes of people who don't know star trek and they're walking around with androids and iphones and stuff like that as well it it, it needs to be it needs to feel more futuristic Um, and another rumor as well mention androids and stuff like that a robot was mentioned as well oh in discovery yeah Mm. Yeah. interesting i forgot about that actually don't make the idea of tricorders and stuff i mean christ my phone now is more advanced than yeah, More GPS tracking and stuff. Work, you know? <laughs> but the funny thing is, with the, the communicator, it could still work. But like, so it, like Kirk never it's really a track the and communicator could do much. More. So yeah. I know this is no. to me would work. I, it could. Do. I still think because it'll have its roots. We've only seen it ever. The function of the communicate. We've only seen this. Yeah, but like it could, could be, be so much more. more. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, I think the DNA you'll you'll have the DNA of Star Trek in Discovery, but it'll I think it'll be redressed. And if I was a writer on Discovery, um, to give them creative freedom, I think it'd be a very bold move to have the protagonist be an already established alien. I think it'd be easier for them to have a new threat 
because then they're not bound by canon and they can kind of go off in their own creative I think realistically, whatever. though, when you, when you do look at canon set at this time, there is not too much to upset. You know what I mean? And you can build on what Enterprise established. Yeah. But then and you're beholding to TNG and Voyager and DSS9. Do you know what I mean? You have that kind of murky in the middle time period, but you well, still have to kind of, you can't go too radical because you're like, well, we know when Picard meets them. I think that's the crux of it. You, you, you can have familiar elements, but you can't be too radical. Yeah. I, I think Discovery went up being a lot like the JJ films were, but not quite in the direction of ultra cool, but more in the direction of ultra real. Yeah. But Believable. I don't track. like to disagree think... on something, right? The Cardassians, TNG, were not mentioned until the Cardassians came into it. And it was only then, with an episode with Miles O'Brien, uh, what episode was it, The Phoenix? Where all of yeah. a sudden, these Cardassians are really, really bad, and the Federation Cardassian War. You know, that came out of nowhere. So yeah. they can do stuff. You know, it's just because just it wasn't mentioned in The Next Generation yeah. does not mean it didn't happen. Like, well, you're sitting around in the ready room, and you're going to oh, bring up so. this big, massive war that happened in 2247. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But, like, to use the example, we know the Cardassians are total, you know, Dips, dipshits. <laughs> you know, they're 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 oh, great bad. They're great baddies with f- fantastic necks, but like, you're not <laughs> going to see them picking flowers in Discovery. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're no, not going to see them yeah. singing singing harmonies and stuff like that. And to the Cardassians. You don't have the Cardassians <laughs> picking flowers. Yes, I, think, I think if you might have the Cardassians picking flowers and being all peaceful, you have to say after next generation. If, if you want to have the Klingons be a warrior monk society, like in the uh, J. Mark Krasinski pitch, if you want to have the traits be different, you go after everything else. Yeah. You don't go before. Yeah. So that tells me you're going to keep getting... The Klingons are going to be like... like have, I reckon the Klingons are going to have a slight rage, forehead rage, not full on forehead rage, but a slight forehead rage with little mustaches and tan skin, and they're going to be all... Rah! Yeah. I, I like to see Bo. I like to see the ridged and the non ridged I think we've covered that in a previous one, and that that would be really cool R- to fit in with ridge reconstruction, as mentioned in yeah. Enterprise. Oh, <laughs> as well, it would be fairly fairly cool. Yeah, imagine yeah. imagine what you call it on the Klingon bridge, and like one of the war, one of the officers turn around and jokes that their captain as ridge reconstruction. Again, <laughs> getting tired. Botox. Reason, I don't think you'll see that. Is because then there's some someone goes seven nine. Someone has the Enterprise and go. What does that mean? He looks like a human. Yeah. Look yeah. Hmm. yeah. Again, you got to look at it from the view of someone who hasn't watched Star Trek hasn't seen before. It before. And so I, I, think I think that's the main there. target. Like, obviously, I yeah. think the, 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 they, they already know that they're going to get Star Trek fans watching it. But they want to get the new people watching it mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, and come here. I'm, I'm an old fan and I want to see a love for Star Trek. I know... I, I, I will yeah. criticize fairly quickly but you pointed out dave as well a fleet of ships going into an unknown territory of space and that opens up the storyline so much and how does the klingons fit in they're Too trying much. to take this territory for the empire so yeah. you know straight away federation or, or, trying to grow or there's a great threat that threatens both the klingons and the federation they decide hey this, this is bigger than both of us we've got to work together on this yeah or like the Klingons are like, why are there fifty ships in the system? We gotta go check it out. Like, you know, or, and the Romulans could be like, what the hell's going on over here? Let's send a few little. Uh, um... Well, I I think like the Romulans in Discovery could be very interesting because like, why not just say not just aboard Discovery, but maybe also aboard a Klingon ship, and have yeah. this sub story going on in the background that the Federation, the Klingons, never know about. Hmm. And they could cause a conflict between the Federation and the Klingons. And no one to this day ever actually realizes in the future that the Romulans were behind it because that is Romulans. Possibly. But then again, if if it's about, if the overarching story is about the Klingons and the Romulans and the Federation, this has all been done in various configurations before. Mm. Like it's fit together in so many different yeah. ways. It happened in. Next generation happening in DS9, happening in Enterprise, happening in TOS. Mm. I mean, yeah, the hollow ship and Enterprise, yeah. And we know it's not going to be the Romulan War, like, yeah, I, I want 
if I made a show about the Roman the War, I would love it. I would love to see that realised. But if this is gonna be about new things, it's about this, it's called discovery. It's about new. It's about the un- yeah. unknown. They, Again, you can't keep going back to Klingons and Romulans all the time. They'll mm. be there definitely because they're touchstones for a new audience who doesn't know anything about Star Trek. But mm. you, you can't be all about them. You have to give the new audience something they discover as well. New and everyone can sit in and enjoy the discovery together. Yeah. Yes, for the first yes. time, which is a fairly good point. Now, I I'm in I'm amongst people who know a lot about Star Trek here, and I'm going to ask the question. Right, we know that it's going to be based on something that's been mentioned in Star Trek, okay? Now, we're talking about old rivalries, possibly. It's been done before, Klingons, Romulans, so on. And then, like Dave, you're saying, it has to be something new. But then as well, when it's something new, it's never mentioned again in TNG or Deep Space Nine. Like, it's it's something that's really only going to happen in Discovery. So there has to be some sort of explanation, kind of, I think, uh, why it was never touched on, you know, for over a hundred more years as well. Uh, so is there something that you think that if we look back on Star Trek, is there anything that pops out that was mentioned before that could possibly be here? I know Chris, you were talking about like Tholians. I, I, I am, I'm strongly sticking with Tholians because one as well, if you do look back, if you look as well in a mirror darkly, where did they find the discovery? True. Yeah. In, the, uh, fine, in the asteroid, which is fine. very similar to, to the promotion of what you call it, where they launched the what you call it, where they, they will launch discovery yeah that's that's just my theory you know what i mean again they're a species that has been showed up in basically they're in the uh, universe Enterprise but haven't been explored and tos but they just kind of disappeared there's no real mention of them in tng so again as dave is actually saying here there's an established villain mm. that we know very little about which is unique except for one episode yeah and mm-hmm. it's a unique storyline and this is why they're no longer mentioned in tng because mm. this conflict's been done and dusted and that yeah. to me i think would be very good because it'll appeal to old fans and new because i couldn't tell you no card <laughs> they mentioned in Memphis and ds9 so but like and- you know that and that, but that goes i think in favor of that theory that they don't just disappear off the face of the universe yeah, like yeah. they're still yeah. there um so that that like that has a pretty good weight uh, of a theory i think um what about yourself dave what, what are you thinking are you thinking it's just going to be something completely I, I, new i went through memory alpha trawling through the timelines and same all the years <laughs> looking for any little thing i can think of that said happened 10 years before tos and for the life of me i can't find anything substantial i know i i haven't watched i'm going through all the episodes there is someone, 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 someone said about how Kirk says someone report this to Discovery, report the Discovery, something oh, really? like that. But he's obviously saying report the Discovery that they found. Not yeah, it's his phrase in a way that sounds like he's saying, "Oh, report this to Discovery," but he's actually saying report this Discovery to Starfleet or something. So yeah, that's what some people said. I don't think that's. I don't think that's legit, personally. But in fairness, it's a clever name to use. You think, and I say, "Oh no, that, that, that's exactly what we used." It, it, it could be, yeah, that could be it. <laughs> Even then, it's just, they're just saying discovery. They're not really talking about. It's an anything incident specific. with TNG. What was the name of the race that supposedly uh, the Federation, uh, our, our favorite one, with our, our lovely Irish friends taking over the Enterprise D? Uh, they were on a planet, and Picard had to evacuate them. They were mentioned, but to me, it just doesn't sell to me. Oh, the Sheliak. Celiac, yeah. To me, it just really doesn't. I don't think you could hook yeah. your teeth into that for. Uh... Oh. Again, that's, no. that's and... a really deep cut from Star Trek. Yeah, and to me, yeah. I, I, I hope they don't. I like. They weren't even that great in the Next Generation episodes, you know. Yeah, was... a whole lot of Irish Sorry. taking yeah. over the Enterprise D and. Oh, that's you set up an Irish bar. Context. That's that's how we like do it. And redhead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amazing though, like I, I think one or two of them found time forward, which is completely untrue because they'd all be there. Got out the bar, they'd all be in time forward. <laughs> to, the cargo mates. To pints. <laughs> I can smell Guinness. Anyway, um, I can't say anything because I'm not Irish, but <laughs> <laughs> I've been the bar too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, hmm. Yeah, discovery. What? 
what a what a wicked web they've weaved so far. And like, I mean, think, is yeah. there anything that stands out to you that they could be touching on? Um, I jokingly said the Tribble War uh, before, because um, the scourge, <laughs> the scourge of the Klingons, um, that that could be something. You know, Discovery could be just like I'm a big not, yeah, that big drive not. section could be just a big you know Tribble Tribble transport. I, that would be. Actually, I'd love to see that touched on in Discovery. You know that? I would love it. That's going to be awesome. Tell us, I'm sorry. This is how the Tribbles come into TOS. Just do an episode on that. The Klingon War with the Tribbles. And how... What was his name um, that had the Tribbles? Oh, it's not Harry Mudd. It's... Oh, um... Oh. He looked like Harry Mudd. What was his name? That jolly bugger. Anyway, you know, down in the comments, we can answer that. Imagine if he was on Kronos or something and managed to get the last two tribbles away from the Klingons and end up the case. <laughs> but wouldn't that just be a good cool story? That'd be a great nod, <laughs> shouldn't Klingon war and see that statue. Series the with the I'll absolutely watch an episode about that. <laughs> <laughs> It was an anthology series. I yeah, would. yeah, I think so. I, it's I would. Star Trek Discovery, uh, a 60th or a 55th anniversary. Yeah. Brainwave there. <laughs> um, the Kling Tribble War, please. I'd love it. But uh, if if I was if I was being serious on the subject, um, honestly, I, I I really I don't have any kind of concrete details. But my inkling is that it's going to be something, uh, some new faction new alien new threat that we've never seen before but just happens to have similar players in the game klingons um and dorians tellerites whatever but the whole kind of drive of this is from a new threat from somewhere that is definitely compelling multiple ships to be involved in or something like that but um other than that i have no concrete details obviously we've talked about our theories uh, we talked about the cast and kind of everything in between and what we're kind of hoping to see as well. But gentlemen, the one thing that we all share in common other than Star Trek is our love of ships. <laughs> Indeed. I've actually, I've, got, I've been prepared for this one now. I'm looking at <laughs> what we have about Explosion of Starships. Yeah. A little Wolf 359 on the desk there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the Romulans from... Which we don't think the Ram is. Ram is realistically shouldn't feature because the Ramian War is over and that's done with us. We shouldn't see the Ramians. That's the one from Enterprise. And this is the one from Balance of Terror. Now, this supposedly was new when it's the first time they've seen this one. So that is definitely a no. Hot from the show. Discovery room. from the show. I know this is a fan favorite and this is what everyone would love to see just in the distance. And I guess just have to show her again. But we'd love to see just that they want to fly by. Doesn't have to even be mentioned, just have it in the background. Would be cool. I think everyone would love to see an NXO. Make it canon. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, make it canon. Um, we've got the Tolians. Mm-hmm. Again, like you have to realistically, and it's a fair point now. And I'm, I am a big, I like my TOS, and I know the points that you are making, like what kind of will look well in this day and age to appeal to the new viewers. That could work. What? Yeah, but like... Need, yeah, definitely, yeah. You, you'll see... You need something bigger behind it, I think. What? I think you need a big big cruiser or something like that that's more threatening and maybe they drop down. Potentially. Or you just have a swarm like in Beyond. Yeah. Yes. So yes. cool. That would be cool. That would work really well. Imagine, we seeing, have... imagine seeing a little uh, a little wing of Tholians making a web. Oh, that'd be so cool. We have the D7s. Now, I don't think... I like the D7 a lot and it's, it's always one of my... F- favorites and I, th- I, th- I think it's just beautiful it's just simple but i do not think the d7 simple discovery one yeah the one we saw anyway the concept mm. yeah. it's very similar not exact but very similar yeah but then again you know there was the facet theory that at one point the romulans came up with this by stealing the federation yeah. ship and using that technology and that's how they came up with the the war word there's nothing to say that the federation I've seen this. Didn't do something mind. similar, yeah. Let's copy it. That to me makes a s- sound sense. Mm-hmm. We've also got. <laughs> Is that gonna work? No. I don't think so. 
Like we honestly, the, the, some of the shuttles was in JJ or Kelvin version track are very similar to that. Yeah, exactly. very similar. It's just fresh, and tweaked, but very similar. That's a great point, Dave, and they would work. Yeah, and, and they look we cool. Have to hand it to JJ. They were cool. They, yeah, I think this is a definite no, no. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Kuda, I think is it's the only one that he did, <laughs> but uh, yeah. it's not gonna hold up That's in this. That that like, and the Antares. Yeah, I have the Antares as well. Um, I was watching one of the animated series, and I like the idea that these were actually. Green ships. Oh, green ships. I like that drones. idea with them. Yeah, I like drones, that. Drones, yeah. So, like, yeah. that to me would work. Yeah. If they're just drone ships. Mm. Um, but again, I suppose, like, this is a point that I'm actually trying to, I'm a big TOS fan, and I do love it, but here's the point that Damien and Dave are both trying to make. Some of these will not hold up. And, of course, we have the beautiful. And I would like to see. Oh, yes. She's a feature. classic. She's, she's a classic yeah. lady. Yeah. And maybe more so... As we said, like the whole discovery thing going out there, maybe coming back closer to the Federation ship that we see the Constitution, and that could, you know, as you said, the way you it see it, I think you're gonna see it near the end of the show, personally. Yes, because yes. thinking from what we know from all the behind the scenes stuff we've learned about Star Trek past, all through next gen, all through Enterprise, yeah, Enterprise, I had to have a ship that was before Kirk, but couldn't look too close to Kirk's ship, we were Roll using Kira Fox, which is mm. just, mm. you're gonna, they, they can't throw that in there straight away, and if they do, it's going to be earned, I think, you can't just go straight to it and have it be a glimpse, you have to earn the appearance of the Enterprise, I think, personally, mm. so yeah. it'll be there, but not straight away. <laughs> question that i'm gonna ask in the comments below do people agree could this fit in i do think it can and i do have to say that if you do look <laughs> through the tos episodes all we ever seen Kirk use this for was Kirk to enterprise and there's don't forget say, don't forget he used to twiddle the knobs yeah but there's nothing to say that this device could do more Mm. I think in Discovery, you're definitely going to get someone do this a lot. Absolutely. Cool. You're going to get something that's like this, this kind of motion. It's not, it doesn't it's have be to be. But but it, you know, remember as well, we do have to look at the events of the cage as well, and that communicator wasn't established then. Yeah. Mm. So I suppose now we're so looking at... In tech. many ways, that communicator from the cage is like miles beyond anything I've seen in Star Trek. <laughs> Yeah. It's like yeah. a clear plastic thing with a bunch of random circuits inside that couldn't possibly work. Yeah, that yeah. That's more than anything else I've seen in Star Trek. Crazy. <laughs> phaser, and I believe at this point they're using lasers. Oh, they're going to call them phasers. They're going to call them phasers. Yeah, I think they should say, I that, that to me now, I think I do agree. Um, I know, you know, you're, you're breaking a bit of canon there, but to me, yeah, call them phasers. You're going to call them phasers. Um, I think that would work. I wouldn't be too put off with that now. You don't think, Damien? No, you think it's now it's outdated. I'd rather see some place. I absolutely love the design, but I just don't think it's going to play well to people who don't have seen Star Trek before. Mm. For Discovery to work and be a success, it has to be Game of Thrones. Yes. And Game of Thrones does not just appeal to people who are into fantasy works. It yeah. appeals to everyone. Yeah. Primarily because of the gore and the tits, I admit. But boobs. <laughs> but... <laughs> the story structure, the the way it's several different threads coming together over time to be about one big epic story. Yeah, that's what Discovery is going to have to try and emulate. I feel. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And really like, point. we've had the distinct pleasure of talking to the likes of John Eves, Rick Sternbeck, and there a lot of the production people involved in Star Trek are so accessible on Facebook, like Doug Drexler yeah. and and so many others. And one thing that comes up time and time again is how production dictates design at the end of the day. Like we're talking yes. about Star Trek, we're talking about canon, we're talking and and in a good way as if it was real. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. it's yeah. like, why does the Enterprise D look like that? Because it was broadcast in four by three, not sixteen by nine. You know, why why was there no great detail on toss ships? Because again, the resolution wasn't there. It was yeah. cheaper. You know, they didn't need to render out full stuff. Here we are, 2017. We have Ultra HD. We have streaming. Okay. You know, it has to be 
it there has to be detail there has to be mod is is modern modernity a word possibly maybe not maybe i just invented it but it has to appeal to like millennials and stuff like that it has to it has to feel like it's in 2250s rather than the the 2017s and stuff like that now i do i do believe the dna will be completely honored in but they're going to they're going to deal with kind of canon as well and like when we look at the teaser trailer like the only visual things that we've seen from discovery are the logo okay we have the split badge okay Mm -hmm. interesting material it has this kind of like abrasive uh kind of hatching bronze. across it. Like a dirty bronze look. Dirty bronze look, exactly. Um, kind of classic retro kind of um, font on it. And we know how important font plays in Star Trek. I hate mm. that font. I'm sorry. It's yeah, interesting. Too fun. <laughs> it's not a good font. No, I'm just trying good. to pull it up there. I, I can't remember exactly it's, it's, what it looked like. They, they use the same font as the as well, like cast, and you can't read half the cast names probably. It's such a terrible font. I think you you made a very fair point as well. Like when you you bring in production uh, producers and stuff like that, you know what I mean. And the very like Doug did come up with a very and I shown this before, but like yeah, that yeah, exactly. to me for the NXO one mm-hmm. would have been fantastic. But the situation was they said it looked too similar. Exactly. To you show you show that to anyone on the street, and they say, "Oh, that's the Enterprise from the 60s. Yeah, yes. and that's so why three, Discovery yeah. has to have a different profile. Yeah. Oh, I know. I agree on that one. I'm just backing up the point where you yeah. say yeah. where a producer yeah, yeah. can come around and say, mm. "No." My only issue with Discovery is that the profile is too simplistic. I think that's we know that's too, thin, too yeah. thin, and it's like a H from the side, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> kind of actually, I never noticed that. No, it's grain of salt. Not, this is early. That was early work. Rushed oh, oh, out. Absolutely, absolutely, it's been changed since then. So yeah. I hope it looks. The other side of it as well is you do have to look at 4K. And another fair point that you're making, Damien, as well is that, like, realistically, if this was the last seven seasons, and I know 4K is relatively new, but say by season five, how many people are going to have 4K at home? Yeah, that's five yeah. years down the line. So if you're missing those details, the fact that this is ostensibly a Netflix production as well. It's, it's a fact that Netflix are paying for 90% of the cost of this show. And it would not surprise me if the very idea for this show came from Netflix instead of CBS. It'd probably come up as a Netflix original or something. <laughs> it definitely does in, where it's on Netflix. So all Netflix originals have been showing 4K to my knowledge. Mm-hmm. All available streaming in 4K. <coughs> Sorry. Discovery absolutely will be available in 4K when it releases on Netflix yeah. or wide. Hmm. So um, even though you have like the classic beauty of the Connie, okay, you're going to have to have a detail. And like when you see this live, you, you can see from your end now, but I have a top down shot of the discovery um, from the trailer um, just as a back in here. And at the time, like you see the inner ring, very similar to the likes of the Franklin. A lot of homages there, uh, homages. Um, but it's undeniable that the inspiration was the and i think dave has a fantastic as you can see dave is a wizard with a 3d printer um we have ralph mcquarry very basic model so not detailed at all <laughs> not not 4k ready i'm sorry <laughs> but um there is a similarity there there is a similarity yeah yeah and like dave that model that you're holding there the ralph mcquarry one that's a canon ship because we saw yeah. it uh, on, in Sorry. tng Mm-hmm. And we saw it in just, Star Trek Two, oh, or three. Slippery ship. Um. So, like that. Had, that's an interesting one with the kind of the 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 really severe pylons, yeah. and then the larger nacelles, um, or the more cylindrical nacelles as well. But it's it's interesting. And initially, and I'm going to put my hand on the, my heart here now. When I saw the trailer for Discovery, I went, ugh. Like the ship was like, I just went, Ugh. um, it was my instant reaction. Um, but it's grown on me now. Oh, I, I can't wait to see what she debuts in May, but it just, it, it got me thinking, what's the ship? It's not just another Star Trek ship. It's not just like the drive nacelle pylon. It's like, there's something this ship looks like this for some reason. And why does it look like yeah. it for some reason? I, um, I, I think that, 
you're spot on there. And I think realistically, I think we all looked at it and went, Ugh, at the start. But mm. I think Mark, they've made such yeah. the smartest move to do this. You know what I mean? It's different straight off. And it's back in your points away from a TOS fan. It's it's different. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it has been established in Canada. Yeah. Part of, the, you know, part of the reason why I did not like the design discovery was I watched the trailer the very. I remember coming home from friend, I had my friend, frame by frame. To my phone. <laughs> I was like, load, load, goddamn it, load. I watched it, and after right finished, I was like, well, I've seen that ship before. Sure, yeah. The star yeah. For Planet of the Titans and Phase Two. Mm. So that's not a new ship to me. That, that's yeah. a ship from thirty odd years ago, four years ago now. So that that, that probably only really applies to me because I knew that ship before the discovery teaser mm -hmm. but so did I. to me i was just like oh, that's not new now that's, that's something that's been done before mm. yeah i think well like the three of us here are big into our, our, our ship designs and we well, knew yeah. that, that ship we've seen it before but realistically i think they're being smart in the sense that we know nothing of her we haven't yeah. seen her do anything and i think it's inspired curiosity back, taking something that was originally concept work of Star Trek, the original series, to develop her down the road, they're using it. So I think it, in one sense, they're paying homage to yeah. the next the next step that would have been the original series if they mm -hmm. went with either Phase 2 or if they went with Planet of the Titans. Personally, all I want on Discovery is these pylons, the upward pylons. Just a little bit of upward plans on these cells. You don't want the on. kind of Voyager esque. Nah, yeah. that, that just looks too simple to me from all angles. It just looks like it's missing a piece. Mm. Mm. I think well, we'll have to wait to see. See, that's we'll it. Like, what we're talking about here now could be completely irrelevant to what we're going to see. But all we can do is talk about the trailer, you know? And she's. I, I believe I think... has said that they've changed the nice cells at least on the, on the ship. Yeah. We, we, yeah, we definitely know it has come out that. That was very. They have admitted, I believe, that it was yeah. it was rushed to feed the frenzy that was like, oh my god, Star Trek Discovery. I think that was the biggest problem with that trailer. Yeah, was the fact that it was rushed, and again, I think it was made in three days. So. It it looked it looked it. I, I saw it better. Like, I saw better ship demos from Star Trek Online. <laughs> you know, I, I have to say when I got the news, when I heard the news, and I know it was a bombshell for most people. When this got pushed back, I was absolutely for one delighted, and I thought for once, hang on here somebody has put their foot down and started using their heads because whoever gave the okay just to launch that San Diego Comic-Con, like, that's a disaster. And it, it's not what people wanted. You know what I mean? It's been, when was the last time, the last episode of Enterprise aired? Like how many years ago was that? 2005. Yeah. 2004, 2005, so, yeah. yeah. Like, we're like 10, 11 years without Star Trek and this is what we got. And they did and it three days before San Diego Comic Con. Very poor decision. I know <laughs> ever decided to go. I know they wanted to show something for the fans, but Jesus, they could. It would have been better just showing us concept art. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. that would have been that. That would have been cool. Opinion, and I think whoever decided that, like, I don't blame the guy who had the rush. This is our too. idea for the show. It's not yeah. final, but we've got this to show you. Then that would have been the same. Would have changed everything. They'd be like, okay, that's not final. That's just we yeah. uh, the idea. What we had to do. I think it was very bad. It was bad call. Yeah, mm -hmm. massive, massive bad call. And like, and I don't blame anyone that was involved that did that rushed job because it's I've no hard feelings of that person. Whoever turned around and said, just that's what we're going with. Whoever greenlit it to release it, like, yeah, it's or put the pressure on to release it, like. I just made the production straight away look cheap. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that model of discovery term. was the concept model that they they went, went from as concept art. Yeah. Because that's only the three designs. If you're concepting in 3D, you keep the poly cam low, you keep the details low, so you can change the structure easily. Exactly. So I'm pretty sure they just said, "Oh, we've got this. Make something really quickly." That I wouldn't surprise me this will happen. That's why. We've got a couple of that. And like some. And I and, don't yeah, and like something. It was a great point to raise there as well because I remember after seeing that. I went onto Google search and I was pulling up the concept art from Ralph McQuarrie, you know, just to oh, kind of compare and contrast like... because it's like even even the asteroid base was yeah. a direct take from it's absolutely homage from that. It ha it had the they had the blue rings it's and the doors blue, and stuff, and you're like, yeah. this is this is supposed to be something new, but it's not. Is it a rehash? And then on top of that, the quality wasn't great. 
And I, I remember hearing so much comment about it being low quality and you're like, you do know this was rushed. Like, this isn't what the TV show is. It's not a low-budget TV show. Um, but you think about that. For, no, but I think I have to say there now, and this, this is one thing that I do feel strongly about. You want new fans to get into this, and this is something you're trying to sell. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but that should never have been allowed. Air. Yeah. No. Stop. Leave, it, leave, it mis- leave the mystery. Promoting. That is not promoting anything. No. They could have just had the silhouette of the ship on a poster with yeah. Star Trek Discovery, the logo, and have a flyby black silhouette and have it stop somewhere so people just say, oh. Yeah. Park it in front fun. of a sun or something so it's just a silhouette. Have you seen the first teasers for Deep Space Nine? The very yes. first video through, where it's just like a blurry blue purple haze mm. and like you see one pile and that's it. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Like, the logo is all different and terribly 90s. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping Discovery at the moment is. Really. Well, like, you, I'd, I'd say it is. I'd say it is. The promos for Deep Space Nine. It looked as though it was a Hollywood production. It did not look okay. as though it was done in somebody's bedroom. And True. Yeah. How do you sell something at the start? You got to realize if you, if I was producing a movie and that was rushed out of my movie, I just I I want to kill the person who said, yeah. <laughs> That's like what. We don't have HD cameras. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, it, it, yeah. it was a very bad decision. Now, in one sense, it did get the internet going. <laughs> oh, absolutely. For all the wrong reasons. Mm. I mean, this discovery, truly people making discovery know that we are begging for any drop of information. Because th- these three people who are announced as cast members, that, that set the internet on fire for all the Trek communities, you know? Oh, their really, Twitter really followers them. jumped. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So... <laughs> and all we know still is they said 10 years before Discovery and he stars these three people now. So 10 years before TOS and he stars these three people. That's, That's all it. we know still. The lack of information. Crazy. Yeah. And like so, that, like initially it was meant to air uh, in in a month's, month's time. Next month? Yeah. Next month, you know? literally. Yeah. And even now, like it's meant to air in May and all we know now is three cast members. Like, yeah. you think, and by, by judging by their comments, on Twitter, because I was I, obviously naturally follow yeah, follow Anthony follow Rapp's Doug Jones, Jones follow Anthony Rapp. They're like, finally, I can talk about this. So, yeah, this isn't new. Like, this isn't. They didn't just get hired like the day before. Um, I, not the day before. I, I, but I think it was fairly recently. Yeah. The actors. Up to I think some of them kind of. Which you have you got to realize that like L A is the place where most people go to become an actor, and now all of a sudden you're you, you know. A lot of these guys are being asked up sticks and go. But to a Canada. lot of shows are being filmed in Toronto nowadays. It is the yeah. second. A cannibal was filmed there. And that was Brian Fuller's last yeah. show, and that was filmed. That was a very beautiful. Moving show. away, but show. still at the same time, is to try and get somebody to move. You know, it, oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Easy. Mm. And again, you got to realize this is not Game of Thrones. This is, and I hate to say it, but it's oh, Star yeah. Trek. I, I would love to see Star Trek get up to that level. Um, I really hope Discovery will. I think, it, you know, I do think there's enough people behind it that, you know, they do know and they do love Star Trek that they can make this really, really good. But at the end of the day is with an actor, it's one of those things that they know signing on to this is kind of like, ah, this could be the end of my career. I could be, you know, going to conferences yeah. and, you know, and that that is a very hard thing to break away from. somebody. Mm. Now, I think so far the three casts that we have got fantastic i'm over the moon by that and like the, these are three audition. established actors yes. as well so like if we go back to the likes of voyagers actors or d space nine actors or tng like obviously we right. have some I established actors like there yeah like, like established yeah like, no. like the uh, if you look the only established we... actors that we'd know would be the likes of the actors that would play Recurring roles, yeah, yeah. It, Star Trek absolutely would not surprise me. Discovery follows the formula again. Basil Latka laid out. We have two, two or three principal actors like Richard Donald and Mary Tunnel, mm. who are big actors who are known. But then you fill in, you bring out people from the background, like DS9 did with Rom and Lita, yeah, and Dog, and Basil Latka did with Callie and 
all the other ba- background actors who became major characters in the show. I would love to see one or two cast members from Battlestar Galactica jump on this project. I would love to see sci-fi actors yeah. jump on this project because it's huge. Think you, will. you know what I mean? And if they could get them, you got to realize as well that science fiction people do like and like Stargate SG One. Um, you've got Battlestar Galactica, as you just mentioned there. You think if you get an actor from Battlestar Galactica to go on Star Trek, yeah, they might watch Star Trek for the first time. Yeah, maybe we drink. But like, I saw this. Uh, there was a couple of comments brewing on on my own Facebook page <laughs> as well. Um, Scott Bakula showing up. <sighs> On like the first episode or something as a cameo <laughs> you know that'd be kind of yeah kind of interesting like we we had like deforest kelly um sure. picard showed up in d space nine um and obviously and we had some kind of calm stuff but even though like i said in the prime universe i feel they want to disconnect from from old trek i think i think they're certainly in prime universe so they can say to the, the hardcore fans like us like hey we, we re- we get what you're saying. Yeah, we know you're playing this world because it's the world you're familiar with. But at the same time, they're saying we get that, but we have to make conscious efforts to disconnect from that yeah. as well. Because the Enterprise <coughs> wasn't Prime Universe, technically. Oh, well, yeah, if you want to hands, it wasn't. Well, but... Yeah, well, that's what Canon's all about, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we know the Borg incident. <laughs> Yeah, first contact. So that that just puts a kibosh completely. The entirety of Enterprise was not Prime Universe, <laughs> technically speaking. <laughs> um, but yeah, interesting. Trekkies, Trekkies can dream. Um, but yeah. Well, I would. I, I really would like to see crossover actors, sci-fi actors. I think it'd be fantastic. And that'd be kind of cool. Oh yeah, like this. There's great actors out there. And... Oh yeah. <clears throat> And 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 a signature of a great actor is that it's not like you're bringing um, over like the character to Star Trek. You're just bringing the actor, and that actor owns their new character. You know. Yeah, and they know what they're getting themselves into. <laughs> they know what what's going to happen to them because mm. they're used to going to the conferences and stuff like that. But I would like to see <clears throat> more sci-fi actors involved in this. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And like one thing I like about them, and I know it's still kind of it appears to be very late in the day with them announcing. But like we saw with um, Voyager, um, what was her name? Remember that? that f- she was she she looked good in the promos. Remember the French lady who oh, was, yeah, like she was, yeah. she filmed and worked with the cast. And then obviously um, <coughs> Kate Mulgrew um, took over there as well. So um, like these guys don't appear to be going anywhere now. <laughs> be very surprising if they left the project at this stage. Section of Anthony Rapp, both Michelle Yeoh and Doug Jones, especially Doug Jones, have worked in sci fi before. Mm. Michelle Yeoh was in Sunshine, which was a pretty well respected sci fi film for the last 10 years or so. I like Sunshine, Doug yeah. Doug Jones, Hellboy, Pants Labyrinth, kind of he's a fantasy actor through and through. Mm. So, That's happy with the cast. Yeah, he's, I'm happy, but they, they are casting from genre of role, from yeah. genre actors mm. at the moment. So that's maybe something going forward we should keep look, keep an eye on if there's casting from genre or trying to bring yeah. up people into it, which you're yeah. gonna need to do a little bit to again bring people to the role to the yeah. show. I think you got you got to you got to hit the ground running because like if you look at the likes of D Space Nine, actually no, I'm gonna ignore D Space Nine and Voyager. If you look at TNG, TNG in my opinion radically changed from season one to season seven. Oh, absolutely. Visually oh, that's, and that's, that's characters as well. Not so much with D Space Nine and Voyager. Um, no. Obviously, a, a show is going to mature. But, DS9 changed. Yeah, but like, if, if you look at DS9 episode one, and then obviously, yeah, okay, th- there there is a good change, but it's... It wasn't, it wasn't as noticeable. Yeah, as... Season, season four. Fair TNG. point is massive compared to season one, the first three seasons. Yeah. I I do, you do tend to see it in these phase nine. And like, I think the mark of any maybe good thinking visually, season maybe four. Yes, it changed yeah. quite a bit, but maybe you're right about characters and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 
Like Voyager, Voyager, Voyager was pretty Harry solid Kim, through and through. Like Harry Kim start, you could see Harry Kim starting to grow up and mature. And never get promoted. You know what I mean? Like Paris never really changed. <laughs> but like no, but Paris never really changed. And I get no. what you're saying. Like yeah. Paris was Paris. Janeway was Janeway. Chicote was Chicote. Yeah. Milano was Milano. There was no the big massive thing. Voyager really changed with Doctor and Seven Nine. They're the only two characters that really changed. Yeah, yes. but and, and again on purpose because they were, you know, mono yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah yeah and but i know what you mean the yeah production standpoint them two were the human analog characters yeah because the humans yeah. are longer human on star trek so you need the analogs to display the emotion and the that that's a flawed concept though i think that, that's something which star trek was too heavily reliant on that, that's a flawed concept which i'm hoping discovery moves away from yeah well i think the android or not an android the robot could be falling into this way true but like when when you look at like we like, have like, don't like, like, yeah like Enterprise right it's Scott who played Archer yeah how many people gave Enterprise a go on the back of Quantum Leap mm. I would like, be very I, I think very few actually but I, they I still there's a lot watched. of overlap between Quantum Leap fans and Star Trek fans before that but they still would have watched I'd say and we had the cameo of Ziggy Dreams would never ever that high for enterprise yeah no. they were never that high but i guarantee you they would have switched in so i was just using that as an example from another sci-fi franchise that you I say oh, go but again like it, it was it was it i think it was a bold move to get scott bacula because oh absolutely he had such a tv presence coming yeah, from massive. quantum leap among others and like he's he's on what's he on now ncis isn't it yeah, so, yeah. yeah, which is yeah. which is a pretty pretty substantial TV show in itself as well. So, like, he's got the creds when it comes to like broadcast television. But um, like, obviously, Picard, Shakespearean actor, you know, has many huge roles to his name. In- very interesting choice for Captain, you know. Um, and Avery Brooks, you know, again, very talented musician, actor, oh, and everything yeah. like that as well. But again. Pretty pretty bold move as well. Uh, we know Discovery is kind of what, what did they what what did they say? Brian Fuller. I know obviously there's going to be like an openly gay character, um, a British doctor, isn't there? Some people are saying Andy Rapp is playing. I'm not sure if that's definite, but people are saying that he's the open. He's I, I heard that rumor as well, but there's no there's no confirmation. It's very hard yeah, to say. I'm not confirm anywhere, but I've seen people saying that. Okay, okay. It could just be assumptions. Though. I don't want to make them. But... And we know the lead character number one as she's referred to, is going to be a female lieutenant commander. Um, British, as, as I said, there was a British doctor in there um, as well. Um, what else do we know about the characters other than what we've seen here? Was there anything else? Uh, I think I was thinking about a Klingon captain, but again, that's all just general general stuff. We Klingon captain. I, 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 I think I believe that. I think that was kind of pretty much confirmed as well but like i think i don't think the smart, Klingon like, captain will be the openly gay character <laughs> <laughs> you never know you never know i would like to see that actually i think that'd be fun that'd be cool yeah, just playing us with their, their war with the yeah, troubles cool, right um yeah it's it's going to be quite a diverse uh, a diver, uh, diverse cast and especially if we're looking at multiple ships as well i think that opens the spectrum even more so because like star trek has always been a very big cast TV show, like again for screen time. It's not just like, yeah. like for example, like Castle or, or or other TV shows where, or like Doctor Who, where you have the Doctor and the Companion too. You have a whole bridge crew and potentially even more here now rather than just I, being I the think captain. With Discovery, you're gonna get you still have like seven or nine main actors like you had on Next Gen through Voyager and Enterprise. You're gonna get four or five or six big actors, the yeah. main characters. And then about ten background, not background, not extras, but like background actors who are there that they can pluck from every now and then. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to get ten main characters. You're going to get half. I, I, I think they will cut down on that. I agree with you, Dave, on that one. I think mm. you will see more like yeah, yeah, bridge crew will focus on probably maybe five actors, mm. and then you might have as you like the likes of the transporter chief, you know, something yeah. like that. I don't I think they're going to overly. I think even like tactical officers and. Even some of the doctors and engineers are going to be background actors. And not, not, back, not background actors, but lesser focused characters. Yeah. Because you have so many ships and so many crew, so many people to go through. You're only going to spend yeah. time talking to 
yeah. focus on every single one of those act- characters. <clears throat> true, true. And I'm wondering, are we going to see the red shirts return? Are we going to have our beam down sacrificial cast uh, crew? Absolutely. Absolutely. Have to. In yeah. that time frame, you have to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The captain and the science officer and crewman number four coming down. In this, I guarantee it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's ah, this we could we could be here for forever, kind of theorizing stuff like that as well. Is there anything else that you kind of want to talk about? As regards I just to, I want to say, going back to the astromycologist thing. Yeah. It kind of sticks in my head that. Uh, I, I believe pop culture borrows liberally from other pop culture of the time. Mm-hmm. I, I believe in Into Darkness, the only reason Enterprise is underwater was because the Heli Carrier looked cool in the, in the Avengers. So I'm wondering if someone's seen the video game The Last of Us with the zombie mushroom people. Okay. And thought that's an interesting thing. Maybe that's just that's purely off the word astromycologist. So that's all I'm working from on that. I, I mean, that's a very flimsy argument to make. A fungus I'm just expert. wondering, that's, that's a big thing in like, video games. Maybe they think that's inspiration for something like a fungal alien race. That, that could be cool. Hmm, mm, spores just... kind of like the halo, the halo aliens as well. Like oh, right. the flood, yeah, halo, the flood, yeah. yeah. So, like, we kind of have a almost kind of Borg-esque kind of hive, but not, like, overtly oh, intelligent, but, like, overwhelming. Ooh. Ooh. That, that, that's purely my guessing, though. If I was writing it and had to involve mushrooms somehow, that's where I'd go. Yeah, well, the minute you mentioned fungi, that's straight what would come to my head is mushroom straight away. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, hmm. That's my, purely my guessing, though, so... Interesting. Probably wrong. Interesting. And is there anything now? Any reference to fungus or mushroom in Star Trek? I I'm going to bet no. Probably not. No. Maybe Keiko mentioned them once in DS Lang for a school project, but <laughs> or Neelix Neelix, or Neelix yeah. Neelix, I think Neelix has several references with fungi. <laughs> I think the, the crew of Voyager. Uh, Eat quite a lot of uh, fungus on a trip home. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually that's a good point. I know we touched on it earlier, but yeah, like a my, my, mycology is the specific study of fungi, mushrooms. Hmm. Why why would that have been specified? Yeah, that's, that's, here that's here we are now. You know, we're like conspiracy yeah. theorists now. That that was said <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> well, maybe hmm. the uh, science officer really likes mushrooms. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mushroom soup. Like, yeah. do you remember that episode um, with those fucking scab-looking flying aliens? Um, oh, uh, the TOS the virus. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh TOS. Oh. Yeah. Do you remember the? Oh they, yeah. They the, couldn't shoot. They had to shoot them. Yeah. yeah. They look like yeah, yeah, splayed yeah. jellyfish. And yeah. like we had the macro virus in Voyager, Voyager. Yeah, um, yeah. as well. So we 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 know how tremendously devastating like a, a biological threat can be rather than an alien yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you, you know when shit gets bad when her ponytail yeah. falls <laughs> but like you know like that that could be something different where you just don't have this token baddie you have this like biological threat that is facing the klingons and the federation and how do how do these different factions deal with it's, this threat yeah. that's something which is isn't necessarily a species that you yeah. know of in next gen and it's a threat that could be a threat a big threat to both the criminals of the federation and to say look this is bigger than both of us and if it's biological and you resolve it within the series yeah. obviously it's not going to show up again so why reference it in tng or d space 9 what mm, if it's yeah. something that's affecting Federation Clown colonies on like one side of the space and they realize it's coming from the Laurentian way system? Out there. The yes. system and they send trash ships to investigate it mm-hmm. and they have to go through with some really wacky unknown space to get there. Yeah. Fleets uh, of fleets of Frasers with analgesic hypersprays and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point though. That's a very good yeah, point. It's a very good point. You know, because 
it's something different that really hasn't been widely done. And it hasn't really been done like outside of video games um, in a series. Huh. Like there's any number, you can count any number of end of days TV shows yeah. out there like zombie attacks yeah. or like so again, go, apocalyptic to, events, but something like that the now. Sudden, the clickers in Last of Us, they are all just analogs of zombies, really. Yeah, but you know, yeah. something something different. I, not 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 like a, a photocopy of it. Hmm? Was don't cross the mind with me, so it's 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 fairly original. Hmm. Hmm. Again, I, it's just my assumption that everything's borrowing things from everything else. True. Yeah. being thick, I'm afraid, but <laughs> exactly. Uh, Interesting. Let us know in the comment section below what you think. <laughs> and how do you like your mushroom soup? How do you like your mushroom soup? <laughs> I like my mushrooms with steak or maybe at, during breakfast with, uh, oh, yeah. with stuff mushroom like that. Steak. Everything else you can uh, get rid of. Um, so, folks, I, I think we've kind of we've gone through characters, we've gone through visuals, we've gone through potential stories, actors, yeah. ships. Um, so I think we'll wrap it up there. So, <laughs> but, folks, I don't, I don't know how long this will be by the end of it, but uh, I hope you enjoyed. And um, as always, you can support the channel by liking, sharing and subscribing. Uh, tell your friends. And uh, yeah, let's get busy down in the um, comment section below as well and get the conversation going. So uh, thank you, gentlemen, for joining me. And, uh, you know, maybe we can do this again more sometime. And uh, do check out the unofficial. Uh, what's the exact name of it? I, I'm probably going to get it wrong. Star Trek Starships Collection, the unofficial fan group. <laughs> That's it. Tongue twister. Unofficial in caps. And it'd be neon if I could, it could be. Exactly. It's, it's for the ship's Eagle enthusiasts. Eagle not affiliated to Eagle Moss in any sort of fashion. I'm actually on that site more than the Eagle Moss one, believe it. <laughs> it is it is it is it is, it is a great bed. There's there's some very good yeah. information finders on that website. Um uh, mm -hmm. and as well like, you know, the likes of Nils and uh posting these pictures and Colin. Mm -hmm. And um Ezo for kind of getting those quick oh, uh, promos out. Yeah. But after we're done here, I'll be posting a cover contest for a uh, competition this month. The cover of the uh, page changes every month. So if you're good with Photoshop or just taking pictures of the models, feel free to submit an entry mm. and you might win and get a picture of up there for the month of December. You win the kudos, which is quite priceless. Um, so, Dave, thanks for joining me. And Chris, Apparently. again, thanks for joining Safe. me again. And uh, listen, I've been Damien A.K. Irish Trekkie and uh, thanks for watching and I will talk to you later. So it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me, the Trek Collector. And goodbye from me, Dave Coe. <laughs> <laughs>